Much of the legislative spotlight last year was taken up by House Bill 6, a sweeping piece of legislation that upended energy policy and is the centerpiece of the corruption case against Householder. But right now, its future isn't clear. State House correspondent Andy Chow has more. Message to the Senate. House Bill 6 is the expensive energy bill that not only created $150 million a year in subsidies for Ohio's two nuclear power plants by increasing everyone's electric bills starting next year, it also propped up two struggling coal plants, one of them in Indiana, rolled back renewable energy policies, and eliminated energy efficiency standards. Householder himself explained the legislation in April of 2019, though two newly elected representatives, Jamie Callender and Shane Wilkin, sponsored it. Three months later, the bill passed after several changes and a long battle for support, with late-night meetings and stalled sessions. 51 affirmative votes, 38 negative votes, therefore the Senate amendments are agreed to. The controversial legislation was barely approved when it came back to the House after some Senate changes. Most voting for it were Republicans, but nine Democrats in the House and three in the Senate joined in. We are not commenting as to the wisdom of House Bill 6. And it was clear from the affidavit that that House Bill 6 was passed with millions of dollars, tens of millions of dollars that were hidden from the people of the state of Ohio. U.S. District Attorney David DeVillers says HB 6 was at the center of this racketeering scheme. The allegations say a company believed to be First Energy and First Energy Solutions funneled tens of millions of dollars to Householder for his own personal and political gain. In return, he pushed for the passage of a bill that would save the nuclear power plants that were then owned by First Energy Solutions, which had been created as a subsidiary of First Energy. The bill was passed under very false and corrupt pretenses, and so we should get back to what does Ohio need? And just restart this conversation. Repeal the bill outright, get it off the books. The Ohio Environmental Council Action Fund was one of many environmental groups that fought back against the bill. Trish Demeter says the federal charges lay out the unfair obstacles that stood in the way of the bill's opponents, not only in the process to pass the bill, but during the campaign to put a referendum of the bill on the ballot. The fight was hard fought by opponents and the tactics deployed by the proponents were very egregious. Democratic lawmakers and then Republicans quickly proposed bipartisan legislation to repeal the changes created through HB 6. And so the question is why do we need repeal legislation? I think we all know the answer to that and I think if we look at the criminal complaint filed in the U.S. District Attorney's Office, the 81 pages detail allegations that definitely taint this bill. Moving a repeal through the legislature is going to bring all new challenges for HB6 opponents. Householders' future is up in the air. Speaker pro tem Jim Butler is next in secession to Householder if he resigns or is removed, and he voted for HB6, as did Majority Floor Leader Bill Seitz and Majority Whip Jay Edwards. Governor Mike DeWine says he is also for a repeal of the bill, but wants an immediate replacement. If the law stays in place, then starting in January, Ohio ratepayers could see as much as a $2.35 increase on their monthly electric bills to bail out the nuclear plants, create subsidies for solar farms, and subsidize coal plants. Lawmakers who oppose the law say since the subsidies haven't started to go out, there's still time to avoid those charges. Andy Chow, State House News Bureau.